Hello, I'm David Connor. I'm one of your church board members, and Terrence had asked me to uh, give the message on the first. You might have heard the power has gone out at the church, but the good news is the power has not gone out inside the church, and that's you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And you need to remember that in 2023. I'm sure there was a lot of storms that happened throughout the year, just like yesterday. Uh, the power went out. Uh, there was a lot of spin outs. There was a lot of crashes. Some people couldn't even get out of their driveway. But God has never left you. He will not forsake you. He is with you. He is for you. And we just wanted to tell you how much we appreciate you uh, from Terrence and the staff for everything you've done, every financial dollar that you've given, everything you've done to help, uh, especially how you've stepped it up in uh, the last month. Uh, and Christmas in Truckee uh, would not have been a success without you. We always need your help. We always appreciate your help, and we want to thank you for that. Um, the message I was going to give you wasn't a typical uh, New Year's resolution type sermon. I've heard over 40 of those in my life, walking with Jesus for over 40 years. Uh, it seems like a lot of people preach a sermon on let's set goals and let's accomplish goals and what happens is really good if you're a goal setter and you can climb, you know, like Mount Everest. But a lot of us have, a, have troubles, you know. We have a lot of things going on in our life that make it very difficult to accomplish a lot of things that we set out as goals. But I know there's one thing. God has a goal for you. And, and I know he has different plans for everybody's life. But there's one thing that he has for all of us as believers. And what he desires more than anything is for us to live the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. And he wants to do that by conforming us into the very image of his son, Jesus. What God wants for us in 2023 is for us to continue as a church and as individuals to become more like Jesus. And he, he does that by giving us a life that only he can give us. It's a spiritual, eternal life. Uh, I know that uh, when the apostles were first preaching the gospel, in Acts chapter 5, you might want to get your Bible out. I might share a few scriptures with you. But it's interesting, uh, they were thrown in jail for having their faith. Now, that's a spin out in life. That, to me, is a major crash. They were thrown in jail for doing what God told them to do. And so they're in jail. An angel comes and rescues them out of jail. You think the angel will tell them, run, run, which we often want to do from our problems. But instead... What the angel told him is, now I want you to go back to the temple, stand in the court, and proclaim everything you know about this new kind of life, the life that Jesus gave you. It's an abundant life. It's a newness of life. Paul said in Romans chapter 6, verse 4, let me read it for you. You might want to flip your Bible open, but uh, it's interesting. He says, therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk or live in newness of life. Newness of life. Uh, what I know about newness, uh, it means it's always fresh and new. Uh, now, after yesterday, you might, want, you might not want any more fresh new snow. All right? I understand that. But the life that God has given us, it isn't growing old. It's always fresh and it's always new. I remember the story uh, in John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Listen to what Jesus said. He's talking to the woman at the well. And he said, everyone who drinks this water, the water at the well, will be thirsty again. But those who drink the water I will give them will never be thirsty the water that I give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up into eternal life. Jesus has a life for us that is amazing, but it starts with a spiritual rebirth. Remember the story uh, in, about Nicodemus in chapter three of John? Think back to this summer when we did the series on John. And he came to Jesus at night and uh, he looked at Jesus as only a teacher, maybe a person sent from God. And Jesus said, Nicodemus, you have to be born again or born anew. You have to have this new life in you to see the kingdom of God. Well, Nicodemus says, that's not really possible. And Jesus said, yes, you really need this new kind of life. 
all right, to enter my kingdom. And you have to be born again to receive that. John in chapter one, it was telling about Jesus. He was proclaiming that he had made everything. He was God. He was the creator. That in him was life. He was full of grace and truth. And he was sharing all these wonderful things about who Jesus was. But he said the Jewish people rejected him. And see, a lot of people in Truckee keep rejecting Jesus because they don't know who he is. And we as a church, Tall Forest Church, live to proclaim who Jesus is. That's our heart's desire. And so in John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, John said to them, but to all who received him, Jesus, who believed in his name, what he came to accomplish, he gave them the power to become children of God. Those who were born not of blood or of the will of flesh or the will of man, but were actually born of God. You see, God has come to live inside of us if we receive him. It's a different kind of life. It's a special kind of life. I think of John when he was writing his other letters said, there's something really new about being born of God because all of a sudden you'll start to love God more. You'll find yourself, instead of practicing sin, you'll find yourself practicing righteousness or having a right relationship with God. You'll actually become an overcomer because the greater one will come and live inside of you. Peter described it this way. He said, if you were born again, you were born into a living hope. There's hope for us in this new kind of life that Jesus has come to give us. It's an amazing kind of life. Uh, Peter later said that if you were born anew or born again, it wasn't because of a perishable seed, but an imperishable, perfect seed, the very seed of Jesus. This is the kind of new life we have. It was birthed in Jesus. It's birthed in our faith in Jesus, our trust in Jesus, and our life of walking with Jesus. We have an opportunity to walk in this type of life in 2023. It's a newness of life. It's a fresh life. It's a good life. Uh, Paul described it as becoming a new creation. He said that we were actually regenerated and renewed by the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. The thing is, is we have to choose. Are we going to live by our old life or our new life? The good news is we have been spiritually, as Christians, reborn. We have been renewed by the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. That's great news, but as most theologians believe, uh, we are made up of more than just a spirit. We are a spirit, because God is a spirit, but we have a soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions, and we live in a fleshly body. These things didn't get born anew. These things didn't have a newness of life. They keep getting older. All right, uh, I know my body keeps getting older, it keeps getting aches and pains, but my spirit can continually be renewed by this relationship with Jesus. And so this is really good news. And Paul said to uh, the people at Ephesus in Ephesians chapter four, verses 20 through 24, let me read it to you. And this will be uh, my closing. He said to the Ephesians, this is not the way you learn Christ, for surely, surely you have heard about him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus. You were taught, you were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, corrupt and deluded by its lust, and you were taught to be renewed in the spirit of your mind by changing the way you think, which you can only do through the word of God, and to clothe yourself with this new self, according to which was created according to the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. See, God has made us anew and he's given us a choice. Are we gonna live by our old self? Are we gonna go back to all the pains and hurts of 2022? <laughs> I think my power went out. <laughs> so it flashed, so I'm not sure if you got that or not. But I realized that a lot of people have had some injuries in the past and you need some healing. You need a touch of God. And so in closing, I just want to pray for you on behalf of Tall Forest Church and its staff that God will give you something fresh and new and bring some healing from the injuries you've faced in 2022. Father in heaven, uh, we're so grateful for Jesus. I lift up the people of Tall Forest Church and I just place them into your hand. I come to the throne of grace and I ask that you grant the people that have been injured and hurt mercy and grace to help them in their time of need. Bless their life. 
and let them walk in the fullness of the life Jesus has come to give us. Amen. You guys, we'll see you hopefully next Sunday. Have a great 2023.